Hey guys, Artist and Tony. I got the crud, so hopefully I can articulate what I want to say in this video. I've been aware of this for a long time, but it's just really starting to bug me more and more lately. And I've got some wind kicking up here, sorry. <laughs> but aren't you tired of, of uh, some politicians just being uh, in their safe zone too much? And I wanted to call out uh, specifically in this video Bob Corker and Lamar Alexander. Now Lamar Alexander is an older fella. I can almost excuse him. He's probably got another term to go and he'll retire and and will have really I don't know what he's done honestly. But I'm not excusing him but he just I don't know he may be wore out mentally by now. I don't know. But the one I'm not really excusing is uh, Bob Corker. I had a lot of faith in Bob Corker. I actually worked for him when I was younger in the 90s. He helped start a housing organization here, a nonprofit in Chattanooga that me and a couple other people were the first project managers for. We actually went out into the neighborhoods and helped start neighborhood organizations before we even started doing loans. Um, and of course, this organization was part of the that's that's a that's a long story about how some of these nonprofits gave loans to people that couldn't afford them, and that was part of the housing bubble. But anyway, not getting into that. My whole point about Bob Corker is is that he started he helped start it very very much a dynamo when he was younger. He he built a very successful construction company with very little money of his own, and uh, Ben Core became very successful. He went on to be the mayor of Chattanooga. He helped develop our riverfront. You know, he helped spur that. Um, he, he had this vision of where he wanted us to become the boulder of, uh, you know, the boulder Colorado of Chattanooga, which was bad for me because we don't need any more stinking liberal yeah. <laughs> uh, influence here in Chattanooga. We got enough now. But anyway, I'm going to try to stay on track. Then he went on to uh, become the state finance commissioner, and uh, this was years ago. And then he came back, and I guess that's when he set his sights on becoming a, a U.S. senator. And I really was excited, you know. I even uh, I'm not I'm not I don't actually remember if I helped put up signs or what, but I, I, I supported him, you know, even if it wasn't uh, even if it was just through financial contributions and and whatever I could do and I was really excited you know I thought here's a guy he's gung-ho he's gonna go to DC and uh, really make an impact and honestly since he's been there I kind of understand the things that he does but I have no clue I mean I understand he's on the, I think the foreign uh, relations committee or some boring ass uh, sorry <laughs> I got a cold so I may let a few fly but <laughs> um, you know, and I saw him in the news recently where he was, um, you know, bucking this idea of, uh, you know, uh, this planned missile defense, you know, bumping that up, or he was questioning why it wasn't a part of another program or something like that. It's always this physical stuff with him. You know, he's very good with money. He's very good at making money. <clears throat> but honestly, Bob, and I'm calling you out personally. I, I want to see you get some passion in your pants. Uh, did I say that right? <laughs> I mean, I was—I meant to say I want a lot of fire under your pants. Is what I meant to say. Uh, I, I guess having a cold makes your head kind of funny. But uh, seriously, I mean, I haven't heard a peep out of you uh, on the Second Amendment stuff or anything like that. I want to hear some. I want to see you out on the steps of Congress, you know, raising a cane, you know, uh, I want to, I want to see you questioning, you know, I want you, I want to see you off Dianne Feinstein, Dianne Feinstein or some of these other liberals. I just, I just want to see some passion. You know, it's easy to go through life and just do what you're good at, but, and, you know, and not really, uh, install any passion behind it. You know, when you're very good at something, it's easy to be successful at it. And if you're just going to go through your Senate career just being cushy, you know, where every now and then we just read an, an article where you're, you know, you've done something great, 
but it really didn't make a, an impact a, a direct something that I can see I want to see something I want to see some I want to see some passion I'd love for you to come out and say look the people of Tennessee aren't gonna put up with this crap you know if I was a US senator that's what I'd be doing right now you know I, I may be getting the wrong kind of press and they may be calling me a redneck but my butt would be out there right now telling people we're not gonna you know I honestly think if there was enough people like that in Congress these these bills this legislation wouldn't be as far as it is now even making it through committee these assault assault weapons ban should have never made it out of committee you know and I know the Republicans voted against it in the committee but still you know it just I just want to see I just want to know why you know, I think, this, aren't you in your second term? I'll have to go look that up. I think you are. Yeah, you're in your second term. I just want to see um, some passion. You know, don't make me run against you <laughs> in the next in the next election. Uh, you were not up for election in the last uh, this last cycle, but I think you might be. Yeah, you'll will you be up for election in 2014? I've got to check, but. I really just want to see some, I, I, I don't know how else to say it, I, I just want to, I want to see you um, really sticking it to people, and that's what you're there for. You know, it's not, this job is not yours um, for just to create a cushy retirement fund. You know, it's just not, that's not why we send people there. And that's not why we sent you there especially because you were dynamo bob you could get anything done in chattanooga all you had to do was say the word and it was done but why can't we see some more of that spirit in, in dc that's what i want to see and i know there's a bunch of people like me they're just afraid to say anything especially locally because you know some people you just don't talk about you know it, it may hurt you locally, uh, professionally, or but I'm really getting kind of old. I'm getting, you know, I'm 50 now, and I'm, and I'm really getting to where I don't care um, what people think. And obviously, that comes through my videos. <laughs> Sometimes I don't shave. I've gotten fat, you know. And uh, of course, I'm working on that. I'd like to lose about 50 pounds this year. But this video is not about me. Uh, this is really about the inaction of our senators. Again, I appreciate everybody watching. We will be having the hangout tomorrow night at 9 uh, p.m. Eastern. Maybe I'll have the sniffles over a little bit by then. And uh, we can, um, I'm going to be drawing the winners of the ammo giveaway for the letter writing campaign. Uh, but anyway, this video is getting way long. So I, I really appreciate everybody watching and how we communicate with each other, stay in touch with each other. And uh, that's really what uh, gives me the most enjoyment uh, about YouTube. So thanks a lot, guys.